Let's chat about knitting. Hi, my name is Sarah and my channel is called Knitting with Naughty Gnome. Welcome. In today's video, I'm going to introduce myself and tell you a little bit about my history with knitting. Then I'm going to tell you my expectations for this channel. And make sure you watch to the end because I'll be sharing my proudest knitting make in almost 20 years of knitting. I live in Western New York with my husband and our two dogs, and being here in Western New York is great for the knitting because we have all four seasons and we have quite a long winter season, so it's ideal for wearing hand-knit garments. I started knitting back in 2003, and it was right after I had graduated from college. I don't know about you guys, but when I was in college, I was used to being busy all the time. In addition to schoolwork and work, I also had a lot of social activities and other things that were going on in my life. But once I graduated and I started a job that was not super demanding of my time, I found that I had a lot of free time on my hands and I wasn't quite sure what to do with myself to keep busy. So I decided to learn how to knit because I felt like I needed a hobby. I went to a big box store and I picked up some leisure art leaflets and I got some acrylic yarn and some single pointed metal needles and I taught myself how to knit. I also feel like I was very lucky because that time was sort of the very beginning of the internet becoming this huge thing, which makes me feel really old, but anyway. And so a lot of knitting resources became available. I was a really active member on the Knitty Coffee Shop and I made patterns from Knitty all the time. And I just grew in my knowledge and my skills and I just fell in love with knitting. Knitting is, and probably will always be, my favorite hobby. It just appeals to so many of my senses. There's the tactile feeling of working with the yarn, there's that soothing sound that you get of the needles clicking together, and even the smell of the wool is just something that is so intoxicating to me. I love every minute of the process, and I can just never get enough of knitting in my life. I also crochet, and I spin my own yarn, and I've even done some weaving, and those crafts might pop up on this channel every now and again, but for the most part, I think it's primarily going to be my knitting. Because that is the one hobby that I love the most, I'll never give it up, I've never really taken a big long break. A lot of my other hobbies that I've done in my life with sewing and quilting and other things like that, I've had many years where I just haven't done those things, but I've never really stopped knitting. In case this is your first time encountering me, I do have another sewing channel called Naughty Gnome Crafts. And if you followed me from over there, I appreciate it so much, you have no idea how much it means to me. But I feel like my yarny crafts deserve their own chance to shine, and that's why I decided to start this YouTube channel independent of my sewing channel. Now, I'm not quite as prolific of a knitter as I used to be. I have some health issues that I don't really want to get into, but I'm just not able to knit for as long as I used to. Probably the maximum amount of knitting time that I really should be doing a day is about an hour. So I'm just not as able to pump out projects the way that I did when I was younger. I actually don't think that that's a bad thing. I think that it has really forced me to slow down and enjoy the process and be really choosy and mindful of the projects that I make so that I'm not wasting my time or energy or yarn that Every piece that I make is something that will be treasured by me or by someone that I love. Now what are my plans for this channel? Next week I will be bringing you my very first episode which will follow a typical podcast format. I'll show you any finished objects that I have, I'll share with you my works in progress, if I have bought anything, I will share that as well, and I'll talk about any upcoming knitting plans. My first video will go up on Saturday, and then after that, I plan to upload a new video every two weeks. Because my output is not that great, I don't really feel like I have enough material to do a weekly podcast, so I'll be bringing you a video every two weeks. And I may occasionally have a few extras if I have a styling video that I want to do or some sort of inspiration. I might have some bonuses every now and then, but my general plan is to have a video every two weeks on Saturday. Now I don't want to leave this intro video without showing you any knitting at all. So I thought I would share with you the one project that I am the most proud of in almost 20 years of knitting. That project is a sweater called the Duxbury Point Pullover. It was in a book called Simply Shetland 4. And I knit it for my husband back in 2020 out of Madeline Tosh Twist Light. Now the reason why I'm so proud of this make is because it is quite an involved sweater. It's cabled all over on both the front and the back. And it took me a very long time to knit. I want to say that it took me almost five straight months of knitting. 
And that was back pre-injury when I could knit for longer. And so it's not like I would knit and then put it away for a few days and get it back out again. I'm talking about it took me five straight months of knitting, working on it at least an hour almost every day. I also made sure to alternate skeins so that the yarn blended really nicely. And I'm just so proud of the way that it turned out. And I think that it's such a beautiful sweater. Now, my husband has actually only worn this sweater one time that I can remember. Part of the reason is because I think I scared him because he is quite an active person and he loves playing with our dogs. And our dog Penny has ripped holes in pretty much every other sweater that I've knit him up to this point. And so when I made him this sweater, because it was such a lot of work, I believe I told him at the time that if Penny rips any holes in this sweater, that I'm going to divorce him. So I think he's a little bit scared to wear it in case it gets messed up. But also I finished knitting the sweater in March of 2020, basically right at the start of the pandemic. And because my husband thinks of this as his going out sweater, something that's too nice to just wear around the home, it's something that he would wear on a date night or if we were visiting friends or something, we had a whole long period of time there where we didn't go anywhere, so he didn't wear the sweater. Sometimes I think that he forgets that he has it, but it is a very warm sweater, so there's sort of a limited amount of time that he would wear it in the winter time. He doesn't get as cold as I do. But after all, we do have our whole lives together. I'm sure that there will be many opportunities in the future for him to wear it. But I have to say that if the sleeves were shorter, I think I would steal it back for myself and just wear it as a sweater dress. So I hope that you've enjoyed this intro video and because I'm a brand new channel, it would mean so much to me if you would hit the like button because it helps YouTube send my video out to new viewers. And also if you would share this video with a friend, if you think that they would also enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to spending more time with you. I'll see you again next time.